All right. So let me go back to my certificates here. All right, so the first one we got up the residential lease. Okay, so let's go ahead and make a scenario. Um, Adam Landlord gives you a call. He said that he has a lease that he needs to be notarized for a tenant that he is going to have living in one of his properties, okay? So the first thing you wanna ask him is, does he have the document? Is it already printed out? Okay, um, will him and the other person be present for the signing? He says, yes. You wanna make sure you tell him, both of you guys will have to have a valid driver's license. Um, or if you don't have a driver's license, you would have to have a valid state ID, um, a valid passport. These cannot be expired. Um, I don't know about any other state, but I'm in Florida and we can accept expired driver's licenses as long as it's not five years past the issue date, not expiration date. So you want to let him know that. You also want to let him know your fees. If he tells you that it's two of them going to be signing, you know, ask him, do you see two um, places that I'll have to be stamping, you know, or if you're in a state where it goes by signature, you just want to let him know your state fee and your travel. He agrees. Perfect. So you get to where he is and you look over the document. You want to make sure that the document is completely filled out. Remember, you should never be notarizing anything that is not filled out completely because they can, you know, commit fraud that way. If they try to fill it out after the fact that you already notarized it, it's your word against theirs. So you want to examine the document, make sure it's filled out completely. <laughs> now I'm going to go down here. Get to the bottom here. Okay, so here you go. Now, you notice right away that the signature portions are not done, okay? And that's okay. You want to um, witness them sign the document, okay? You notice the landlord's information is completed. You notice your notario certificate. You're gonna read it because you wanna know is this going to be a giraffe? Is this going to be an acknowledgement? Is this going to be an oath affirmation? Okay. So quite naturally, oath affirmations are giraffes. Okay. Oath affirmation is the process that is done when you're doing a giraffe. Okay. So they kind of go hand in hand, although they are two separate notarizations. Okay. You see that the tenant's information is filled out. The tenant is there. Both of them have valid identification, so you can proceed. Now, because you say that you um, you say sorry, you see that this is telling you that they swore in front of you, so you're just going to have them take a oath. You have them raise their right hand, and you're going to have them, you know, agree. So, do you agree that the terms contained in the document are true to the best of your knowledge? Yes, I agree. Or I swear, or do you swear or attest to? However, are you going to word that however the um, oath is recited in your state? Okay, so you're going to always make sure the venue is there. Okay, what if you have a certificate and the venue is not there? Okay, you want to see if there's if it's contained anywhere else in the document. Now, see if you look here, it has it contained twice in the certificate. You have a venue at the top, and you also have a venue down here. So if you did not see the venue at the top which sometimes you won't. So don't always just say it's not there. It's right here. So, and that's perfectly fine. If you have room in the certificate, if it's allowed in your state, you can just write it on there. So you have state of, county of is gonna be wherever you are at the time of notarization. It's not gonna be this um, county that you are commissioned in. It's gonna be the county where you are at the time, okay? So you're gonna put on, <clears throat> let me see. I want to fill in. I'll fill and sign this. So I'm going to put my information. Where is it? Oh, let me change this to black. Okay, there we go. Okay, Florida County. I'm going to say um, Martin County is where we are. And then on, 
you're just gonna put the date here. So we're gonna put today's date. Notice how I spelled out the date. Some people will tell you just put the date for slash 16 slash 2021. I guess if it's not enough room, you can do that. I was trained to write the date out. So that's why I wrote the date out. Okay. And then you're going to sign. You're going to put your county here again, your state again, and then you're going to put your commission. Okay. And then you always want to make sure you stamp closest to where your signature is. Now, I don't know if you guys noticed, but um, who has this document printed out? I do. This is Kelly. Okay. I have it printed out. Now, in this space here, is that big enough for your notary stamp? Um, let's see. Was that this? Is that the second part of this um, notary? Because you have two of them here, so I, you, I guess you called where it a venue. Um, where, where, where is it? It's notary. Yeah, where it has two. It has two. Um, oh, I'm spaces. sorry. We're under landlord. Under landlord. Under landlord. Notary. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, let me try it. Hold. On. I'll tell you in just a second if it's enough space. Okay. Hold one second. Yes, it's enough space. Okay. Now, what if you got to that part and you noticed that it was not enough space for your stamp? Do you guys know what you should be doing if you no. don't have enough room? Okay. Um, um, I, this is Brenda. I'm, yes. I mean, as new as you can be, so I'm going to try my best. I think there's an uh, like an attachment or, or a form that you can use to attach to this that is true but i just don't but, know the name of it um it's called a loose certificate oh, and, loose. and um <laughs> based on the notario certificate you would know which one to attach but there is more than one space here for you to stamp okay so in the event right here is not enough room to put directly next to you can put it right here because it's close enough to your signature and it's right next to your commission here, okay? I have also put it like over here, you know what I'm saying, side by side, going um, vertical instead of horizontal. I've done that before too. But what I have had to do is I have had to um, get a, I don't want to use that. I've had to get a smaller stamp, guys. So. If your state allows, um, you may want to look into getting a mini stamp because you are going to um, encounter some small spaces in these documents. Somebody join. Yes, good evening, everyone. Hello. This is Loretta from Texas. Hi, Loretta. What is this? Oh, okay. All right, and then you're gonna sign. Now, I usually, before I do that, guys, I have um, I have the person sign before I notarize anything, okay? So you're gonna have your customer sign and date the document in your presence. You're gonna have them do the oath, and then you're gonna sign and complete your certificate, okay? So I did leave that out, I'm sorry. Um, I had a brief question, if I may. Sure. You mentioned that um, we have to have the individual take the oath. Yes. My, my question is, who is that individual? Just the tenant? Both of them. Because as you can see, you have two certificates here you have to fill out. So they both need to be duly sworn. Oh, okay. Thank you. Now, if you had a document where it was just whoever is signing is the person that you need to swear have um, do the oath affirmation. Okay. All right. And now the signer does not have to write the date out like you did. Okay. Because they're not writing in your certificate. They're just signing and dating the document. So that's perfectly fine for them. Okay. So 
everything is filled out and you're going to apply your stamp here. Okay, and then you're gonna have Tracy do the exact same thing. You have her sign and date, you have her raise her right hand and recite, recite ugh, sorry, the oath. She's either gonna do an oath or affirm, you know, the oath is to swear to God and affirm is just to affirm to, a, you know, on your own honor, okay? I'm sorry, I did have one other question. Sure. Um, you, I believe you said you were in Florida. I'm in Pennsylvania. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and I recognize that every state um, charges a different fee. Are you able mm -hmm. to give us an idea more or less what something like this uh, we would charge the uh Yes. Customer? So because I'm in Florida, we charge $10 per notarial act. The notarial act is whenever you are filling out a certificate and applying your signature and seal. So for this particular document, I am um, performing two notarial acts. So this will automatically be $20 plus my travel fee. And depending on how far I travel, it could be anywhere from 10 to 30 you know, or more dollars. Um, so let's just say I traveled, you know, between 20 and 30 miles to this person. So I'm going to charge them $30 plus $20 for the document. So Virgil, you charge, you say it's a dollar per mile. I'm in Florida. So I would do what you're saying yeah. would pertain to me. So a dollar per mile. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Okay. April 16th. 2021. Okay. So remember here, guys, you're putting the date. It says on. And um, some of them, they put on the 16th day of April, or you can put on April 16th, 2021, however you want to word that, as long as you have the date in here, because that's what goes here. Okay. And then you're going to sign. Who am I signing as? We're the notary. And then remember, you have the venue in two spots. You may not always have the venue up here, so you want to keep that in mind. It may be um, within the notarial certificate. Okay. Notary signature is Brenda Notary, I think I put it right. This is so laggy. Am I um am I freezing up on you guys? Oops. No. Okay. Yeah. It seems like it's laggy for me. Okay. And the commission is what? I put one one two oh two four. Okay. And then I think this section here is big enough to um to notarize, right, Kelly? Big enough for your stamp there. Yes, ma'am, it is. Okay. All right. So we have completed our first um, notarial certificate. You had two certificates. We know that this was a jurat and an oath affirmation because it had in the notarial wording sworn. Okay. So we always want to make sure we look at that so that we know what type of notarization we're completing because you also have to um, list that in your journal when you do the journal entry. I had another question. I'm sorry. Like I said, I'm okay. very, very new. Um, no, no, so fine. you sort of um, segued it to my question, which is, um, so you have your um, journal with you. Do you fill it yeah. out um, while, um, once you completed this? Um, no. Like once the client sign or no. while you're there or what's your approach? So as soon as you get to wherever you're going to get for your notarization, you're going to ask them for their ID. You're going to examine it to make sure that everything is there. Make sure it's not expired. Make sure their signature is there. Make sure their picture is there. Make sure the address is current. Okay. Because you don't want to just put the address that's on the driver's license if it's not current. Then after that is all clear, you're going to proceed to fill out your journal. Okay, you're not going to perform any type of notarization until your journal is complete. You 
fill out your journal, fill out all the information needed. You examine what you're going to be notarizing so that you can notate in your journal which notarization you will be performing. After you have, after you fill it out, you're going to, you know, put their current address and name. Also put the address where you will be notarizing the document, where you're currently at. Have them sign and have their ID information recorded in there and everything like that. Then you perform the notarization, but not before your journal is um, completed. Does the notary then stop the work if the address is not current on the driver's license or the state ID? Like, what do we do? You ask them what is their current address and, and they will give it to you and then you write it in. So it's okay if, let's say, it says 1234 Florida Avenue on their driver's license, but they actually live at 444 Martin Drive. Yes, that's perfectly fine. You want to have the current address in there. And I know in some states, they don't even allow you to record the identification number. So you just collect all the information that you can to identify the person because in the event that the notarization you performed is questioned, you just want to make sure that you have enough evidence to provide. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. All right, guys, we're going to go on to... Virgil, this is Kelly. I have yes, a question. Yes. I'm confused. Okay, so right. if okay, so if like she just stated, if they have a, a address that's on the the paperwork that's wrong, you said you just what do you do? Cross it out? I mean, no. what do you do? Um, no, what she was asking was if the person's identification has a different address than um, what their current address is, you're just gonna write the current address in your journal. Okay, got it. That's what I was confused about. Okay, so you write yeah. the current address. In the, okay, okay. Yes. Always ask them when they present their ID to you and you get to the address part, is this your current address on your ID? Oh, no, you know what? I moved. Okay, please give me the current address. Okay, let's save that. Nope, let me send it to nobody. Close. All right. We're going to go. So our next one here, the parental guardian consent for tattoo. So this is actually um, a notary that I had. Um, I had a um, young girl. She was about to be 16. Her mother contacted me and um, said that she needed to have a letter notarized because her daughter wants to get a piercing, actually. And I thought it was weird. I'm like, a piercing? I'm like, is she getting a belly piercing? or something like I'm just you know I I didn't ask where she was getting it until I saw them in person so I was like oh sure and I was like now what I would need for you to provide to me is I would need your ID it cannot be expired it does need to be a valid ID um, she said she didn't have a uh, um, ID she said she had a foreign passport that's sort of that was fine because that is an acceptable um, form of identification here so um, she said she had a foreign passport. And I also told her that she would need to present to me her daughter's birth certificate because I need to make sure that the person who is consenting to this minor is actually the parent. Okay. So she said, okay. And we went ahead and we agreed upon the terms of my services as far as payment goes and things like that. And so uh, we met and she presented to me her foreign ID and she presented to me the daughter's birth certificate. Now, when I filled out my journal entry, I put all the necessary information and in my notes or additional information section that you may have in your journal, I put on there that she presented minor's birth certificate to prove that she was the parent slash guardian, okay? You wanna make sure you notate in your journal as much um, relevant information for the notarization as possible because you're going to be notarizing so many people you're not going to just remember that off the top of your head okay and if that can if that ever comes back on me I can say look this was the parent she presented xyz to me and it's there okay so I'm going to um, go ahead we're going to examine the document right Now, you notice the notarial certificate down here. 
What type of notarization will this be? Jurette. Jurette. <laughs> Yes. yes this is Why? Jewish. Because you always want to pay attention to these words here, sworn to or affirmed. Right. That lets you know that that is a jurat. And it I'm also sorry, lets you know a that jurat? a jurat is another notice certificate. So most notarizations you will be completing, generally, the most common ones are acknowledgments and jurats. So this certificate here is a jurat because it says sworn to or affirmed to. Okay. An acknowledgement usually will have acknowledgements somewhere within the notary um, the notarial certificate. Okay. Okay. So we made sure that everything was filled out. Now, what did you guys notice down here? Do you notice anything missing down here that you usually would see over here with the wording? state and county where to or something yes the venue is missing okay but the venue is on the document if you go back up to the top it's all the way up here and that's perfectly fine okay you just want to make sure it's not missing at all because okay. if it is missing and if you don't have enough room to write it in then you want to be attaching a loose certificate to this document. If you have to attach a certificate to this document, you just draw a line straight through here and you either stamp or print C attached certificate. You attach the appropriate notari notarial certificate, which will be a jurat, and you fill it out appropriately. Sign, sign and sell it, okay? But this certificate is perfectly fine. Now, again, too, there are some states where the notarial wording has to match to a T. Um, Florida is not one of them, but um, I think California is. Like, it has to match, like, completely to a T, like, all the words. So they would have to cross this out, and they would have to apply their own loose certificate. But we're going to use the certificate because it's perfectly fine, okay? So we're going to fill out Florida. Um... Let's do what? Uh, Broward. Broward County. I'm going to go down here. Everything is filled out, by the way, because if it wasn't, what would you do? You would ask her to please make sure you fill the document out completely, and then I will, you know, notarize it. Now, she did sign this before she saw you. That is not allowed with your rats. So instead of you turning her away and telling her, I'm going to need a different document, all you have to do where's all my stuff at to do this? Oh, it's not going to let me. Um, OK. All you have to do is strike a line through this, put your initials and the date, and have her sign next to it. Just because you want her to sign in your presence because it's a jurat, okay? If it was an acknowledgement, she would not have to do that, okay? She would just have to acknowledge that that is her signature, and you would ask her, ma'am, is this your signature on this document? And they would tell you yes or no. So this is already signed. Like I said, I would strike a line through, initial and date it, have her sign right next to it. Okay. Right. Sworn to or affirmed in person before me means you, the notary public. This 16th day of April 2021. I, you're going to put the mother, okay, who is personally known to me or who produced satisfactory identification in the form of. You can strike a line through this personally known to me because that doesn't apply. She produced satisfactory identification of, and you want to spell it out. You can abbreviate the state, but you should not abbreviate the type of identification, okay, that she produced. You want to spell it out. Okay. 
and you're going to sign. No, I don't want to use my digital ID. Sorry, guys. I'm also a remote online notary, and um, my digital certificate is uploaded here, so I don't want to use that. We're going to use Brenda Notary, and then we're going to... And this section, I believe, is big enough for your seal, right, Kelly? Mm -hmm. All right, and then you just stamp it, and it's done. Now, do you guys have any questions about how we did this certificate? Nope. Again, it's Brenda. I would just want to have an idea of what, what's the fee for something like this. Um, I've performed acknowledged... one notarial act. Mm -hmm. So it would just be my travel fee and the one notarization. But the $10 and whatever the mileage was to get to this place? Yes. Okay. Now, did you have them pay before or when you're there or once the job is completed? Um, I always have them pay afterwards. Um, okay. I, it probably would be a good practice to have them pay before you notarize a document. You know, um, God forbid anybody ever say, okay, well, I'm not paying you and leave. You'd be like, oh, dang. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you can rip the document up, like you're not paying me. Okay, you're not giving this document. <laughs> oh, I, I always have them pay afterwards. You know, um, they're usually pretty good about that. I haven't had anybody stiff me yet. So, I have a question. Yes. Um, with regards to payment, you know, once mm -hmm. you once they pay you, do you give them a receipt? How do you do that? Yes. So. Um, I have um, paper receipts and I also have PayPal that I use. Now, this person, she paid using her credit card. So I have a mobile reader, a PayPal mobile reader um, that I have synced to my phone. So after she paid, she got a text message receipt. Now, oh. I also use PayPal for cash transactions too because it's... I have it programmed with all of my items saved. So I literally use my phone as a cash register. Even if they're not doing a credit card transaction, I can still input in here what the services were. And then I can, it gives me the option to put how they paid. So if they didn't pay by credit card, they didn't pay by check, I can put cash. And then it's asked me how much cash they give me. And I put that in. It was more than you know what it was supposed. It'll tell me the change if it was exact. It'll say, okay, how do you want to send a receipt, text, email, or no receipt? So I'll type in text and then I'll ask them their phone number because I don't have it saved in my phone. And they'll give me their number and I'll sit there and make sure they get it to their phone. And once they've gotten it, I just also let them know um, I'm going to be sending you a link to my Google Business page if you can please leave me a review. And they always say, okay. And then we're done. Mm -hmm. Excellent. First yes, job, so the, this is Kelly again. So the <laughs> PayPal thing, how do you set that up? Do you set that up under, just open up a PayPal account and, and link it to your bank account? Or, I mean, do you do a, a, your own business account or do you do a personal account with that? So I have a PayPal business account that I set okay. up. Um, I already have a personal and... Um, I have a business. So I set up a business when I didn't want it to be with my personal. I have a business checking account with Space Coast Credit Union. So okay. I have my PayPal link to it. So whenever I do um, cash transaction, not cash transaction, whenever I do credit card transactions, on at the end of the week, before noon, I transfer the money to my checking account. And it usually posts within one to two business days. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right, guys, so we are done with this one. Now we're going to go here to power of attorney, revocation of power of attorney. Okay, and this is a Georgia certificate. Okay. Now, why? Okay, here we go. Okay, so person calls you, you know, um, they're from Georgia. But they're visiting, you know, in your state. Okay, um, I'm just going to use Florida because that's where I am. So you can notarize out-of-state documents. Okay, 
the only thing you want to make sure of is that the notarial wording matches what is allowed in your state. That's all. If it's not allowed in your state, you're just going to attach a loose certificate, okay? And you're going to, like I said, draw a line through the certificate that is on the document. Because if you don't want to leave it blank and somebody fills it out, you want to mm. strike a line so they know this certificate is null and void. It, it was not used, okay? You're going to write or print. You're going to print or stamp. I have a stamp. That's why, you know, I say stamp or print. You can either stamp or you can write it in. See, attached certificate, and then you're going to attach your state-specific certificate, okay? But, like I said before, um, let's go through the whole scenario from, you know, start to finish. They contact you. They need this notarized. They're going to be in town for a month. So, you go ahead, you examine the identification. Um, in this instant, they live in Georgia, but that's fine. It's a valid driver's license, not expired. So you go ahead and you fill out your journal. Okay. After you fill out your journal, making sure you know you ask all the right questions. This is your current address, blah, blah, blah. You put the address where the notarization is going to be performed. You examine the document, make sure it's completely filled in. Okay. They signed it. So since they signed it, you want to look at Let's see, is this an acknowledgement or is this a jurat? Let's see. We're going to look down here. It's an acknowledgement, so you're safe. All you got to do is ask her, is this your signature on the document? Yes, it is. Okay, perfect. It says state of Georgia. You're not in Georgia. So we're going to strike a line through. Let me see if it'll let me do a sign here. Uh, yay, let me do it. Okay. You're not in Georgia. Going to strike a line through here. Uh oh. You're going to put your initials. State. Again, you're going to put the correct state. Move out my way. Let me see if I can move. See if I can make it smaller. Here we go. Move it out my way. And the county we're in. I'm just gonna put Broward. Dade. I'm gonna do different counties. Dade. Okay. Now, if you notice, it has no lines here for you to sign. That's okay. Okay. You can draw a line if you like. You can sign on top of it. Okay. Now, when it doesn't have here like a line and it says notary public under it, you want, oh, what are you doing? Okay. Uh -huh. I'm going to write on here again. What's going on? Uh... Hold on, guys. I'm trying to type in here. Okay, well, you want to put common notary public, okay? If it doesn't have a line here already with notary public under the line, you want to put your name, comma, notary public. Print it. You can sign it without putting that, but when you print it, you want to put print it name, comma, notary public, and then you want to sign it. So let me do another line. Let's see if I can... Print on top of that. So this is active funky on me. Okay, there we go. Good notary, comma, notary public. Okay. Then you're going to put in your commission. Uh, well, just go, go down there. And then you're going to apply your seal. Now, guys, you see where it says seal? You do not want to apply your stamp on top of that. Your stamp should never be um, covering up any type of verbiage on the paper. You have to find a clean space to apply your seal. So you can try to apply it above there, below there. If your line is not super dumb long like mine's, it's just shorten this here. And I can just put my stamp there. So no room. 
okay? And then you want to also make sure that you pay attention to your verbs in here, okay? Your certificate shouldn't, you shouldn't just leave it like this when it asks you the different verbs, okay? Now, the person is a woman, right? So he, you would draw, oh gosh. Kind of put a line through it, okay? Now, you know, some people, they're like, okay, well, why not circle? That's just too much. That's doing too much, okay? The way that we do corrections as notaries is we just strike a line through, okay? You don't need to do a whole bunch of bubbles and crossing. No, we just strike a line through, okay? Strike a line through here, too. And then we are done, okay? We're done with this notarization. You collect your fee, thank them, make sure you tell them to leave your review, and that's it. Now, does anybody have any questions about this notarization? That was easy. They get easier the more you do them. You know, I see people freaking out so much. I'm like, guys, you don't, you don't need to freak out. It's not really that hard. It's just that they're going to become repetitive. And you just want to know, most importantly, in your state, it's more important to know what you can't do than what you can do. Because if you mess around and do something you can't do, there's there's consequences to it, up to you losing your commission. Okay. So, like I say here, this is a different state. You just line through it and put your initial and date, and you put the correct state. Okay. Like I said, I'm in Florida. It's not particularly um, strict on the notarial wording. Okay like some states are. All right, so that's it for this one. You guys sure you don't have any questions about this one? Oh, that R got, either that R got cut off or I spelled it wrong. And that's another thing. If you guys notice, I don't know how the R got missed, but if you notice that their name is misspelled on here, if this, the name contained in the document does not match their identification, don't notarize that. You either need the document to be corrected, okay, or, or you don't do it, okay? I have a question. Are they able to um, place that, strike that line, as you were saying, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. write in Renee Singer, I believe is her name, and then she initials or, or the yep. notary initials? Nope, she has to do her own correction on her name. You cannot correct her name for her. Okay, but then we can complete the work after she does that? Yeah. Yes, okay. you can. Yes, you can. She can correct it, or if she doesn't feel comfortable correcting it, you don't notarize it. You can't okay. notarize Renee Sign and she's signing, you know, and her name or her identification says Renee Signer. Mm. Okay. Then that means you're not notarizing for the right person. Brief as question. As far as you're concerned. Mm -hmm. um, like this um, name, Renee Singer, let's just say hypothetically, um, the signature does not look like anything like on the driver's license. Should I care? Um... Like the person looks like the really... person in the picture, everything matches, but like for me, right? I used mm -hmm. to write out my entire name, Brenda, and my last name, mm -hmm. but um, now I just do my first initial and my last name, which mh. is different than what appears on my driver's license, but the mm -hmm. penmanship, you can tell it's the same because my B is very mm -hmm. unique. So in that instance, if the signature is complete, completely different, but everything mm -hmm. else matches. Can we still do the mm -hmm. work? So, so the rules on that is vague. And the reason I say that is because as notaries, we're not, you know, forensic science, scientists. We're not going to be able to say, oh, you know what? The way you curled that last letter, I, I don't really match. We, we can't do that. We can't, okay. we, all, we can't tell a person how to sign their signature. My signature that I sign all the time always looks different. <laughs> so, you know, I can't say, well, you sign like this on your driver's license. You need to sign this document exactly the same. You cannot do that. 
You can't tell a person what's a sign like that. <laughs> You're welcome. But use your best judgment is what I will say. Okay, because people commit fraud all the time. So if in your gut you feel like something's not right, do not do that notarization. They can't make you. They can go to somebody else and let them do it. So how do you get out of it um, politely? Like, do you say, um, what's like, why? Any suggestion on how I could get out of it politely? Um, if something doesn't feel right, whether it's a signature, whether you suspect fraud or whatever, if something just your intuition is like, you know what, something's not right. How do we politely get out of it? It's not really any good way to tell somebody that you're not going to do something they want you to do. Because when you tell somebody that you're going, you're not going to do something they want you to do, they're going to get mad at you no matter how you say it. So um, I would just tell them, you know, I'm sorry, but I can't perform this notarization for you. I just don't feel comfortable and I'm not going to do it. But thank you okay. so much for um, contacting me. Have a good day. And that's it. And you don't have to do it. And then I'm a newbie and I should give me a bad review and I won't get any more business. No, I'm just kidding. Thank well, you I'll for say, the feedback. Girl, everybody, <laughs> everybody money is not good money. I tell people that all the time. I right. will turn it up some money in a minute. I don't care. Thank you. I just needed like to know I that. Didn't, oh, yeah. Because just like I didn't do a notarization for you, I'll do five more for someone else. You know, it's my commission. They can, they're not going to protect your commission. You know, so you have to protect that. And if you don't feel comfortable, then don't do it. Oh. All right. We're going to go on to our last one. I hope that this is helping you guys. Um, I tried to pull some good ones for you. Now, this is a, another one I've done. Um, it's a um, TSP, okay, is what he called and told me. And what this is for, if you have never served in the um you know army or military or anything like that this is just a withdrawal form from a veteran retirement fund um, account or something like that retirement plan so he contacted me he said you know he needs me to notarize his tsp4 and then i got quiet and he's like you don't know what that is do you i said i don't and he said it's okay he was like you can google it but you know he explained to me what it was the same thing I told you. I said, oh, okay, that's fine. I said, so tell me this. Were you talking to me? Was she talking to me, guys? No, I don't think anybody said anything. Oh, I thought somebody said, give me a second. Okay, so they called me and um, I, you know, asked him, you know, he told me about this TSP form. I said, okay, he wanted me to meet him at his um, doctor's office. Him and his wife were at a doctor's office. So I said, okay, that's fine. So I went to meet them at the doctor's office. It wasn't too far from my home. And um, I examined the document. They both gave me their driver's licenses, which were both valid. He has had the current address, hers did not but I made sure to ask. I saw that the form was completely filled in and they were advised not to sign the document until they were in front of a notary. So that was good. So, okay, so not yeah. So you're going to look over the notarial wording. You're gonna make sure that everything is there. Now, what do you guys notice is missing that you're used to seeing? The county of venue. Yes, State. that is called the venue. Okay, but the venue is there. And let me explain. You're not always going to see state and county, mm -hmm. but right here you see jurisdiction. The jurisdiction for where you are commissioned is your state and county. So you're going to put state mm -hmm. of, county of. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this certificate is complete, okay? Now, like I said, you know, um, you would, of course, check the certificate wording, make sure it applies to your state. Now, with this particular certificate, guys, if you notice here, I had no room to apply 
Madara Seal. This was the first notary that I did before I got my mini stamp. So I was faced with quite the conundrum. I'm like, oh my God, how am I gonna? So I'm just kind of staring at the document. And he's like, is there a problem? I said, yeah, no. And he's like, okay. I said, so I have to apply my stamp here. And I don't think my stamp is going to fit without covering some of this wording up. Now, this um, his particular form, it had two certificates because his wife was also on the plan and she had to also sign. So it was two identical areas, just like this one you see. Okay. So I had them go ahead and sign. Let me see if it'll let me do it. Okay, it'll let me do it. So I'm just going to type his name out. Gary Signer. Okay, that's who he was. And then I'm going to put today's date. Oops. Taking it back to the year my son was born, 2012. All right, 2021. Okay, your commission. Okay, now here it's pretty simple. The person signed item 13, which is here, is known to or was identified by me and before me, signed or acknowledged to have signed this form. In witness thereof, I have signed below on this 16th day of April 21. Okay. Now, because it says under the line here, notary, then you don't have to put comma notary public. But if you ever have a line where it's not specifying who signed this, you have to put comma notary public so that they know okay and you're going to do that in the printed name um i think some people do it with their signature too but i have it but you probably can just go ahead and do it with both to be on the safe side okay so we're gonna do brenda notary uh, All right, there we go. Notary. Phone number. And here we go with the jurisdiction. Put your venue. State, uh oh. State of Florida. State of Dade. Okay. That's what you put in your jurisdiction. You put your venue, okay? And then you try to apply your seal without covering up any verbiage, any, any images. You cannot be covering anything with your notary seal. In my situation, I covered like the very tops of these words here, and I was a little nervous about it. And so what I told him is, um, and I couldn't fit my seal over here either because it would have covered up the line. So what I did, it was I gave him a certificate okay I didn't write on this form C certificate C attached certificate I gave him a, a loose certificate I filled it out on the bottom portion where it says optional area I put that, that certificate belongs to this document so that way he could not use that certificate to put on any other document I put on there the title of this document and I told him, and also on the document, just so you guys know, it said on there that no other notary certificate is allowed to be used or was permitted or something like that. So this is why I didn't put C attached certificate because it's, it's specifically said on the document that I was not allowed to do that anyway. But I didn't want his document to be rejected. So I gave him a loose certificate. I told him if for some reason, they don't allow this document with the stamp covering, you know, the very tops of this. And if they wouldn't accept the loose certificate, come back to me with a um, blank form and I would do it again for you free of charge. So the next day when he turned, um, turned in the document, he called me and he said that 
they accepted the document as is and that he shredded the loose certificate. And so I said, okay. But you are going to get some situations where that area is just not going to be big enough. So that is why I now have a regular size notary stamp and a mini for this particular reason. He was my first encounter. And after that, I said I would never be faced with that type of situation again. Um, brief question. Um, where sure. can one find a mini stamp and why should the font size be for the uh, mini stamp? Okay, so let me stop sharing my screen and I'm going to go ahead and go on camera so I can show you guys my um, different steps. Did you guys have any other questions about this um, certificate before I close out of it? No. No? Okay. So we are done with the certificates. I'm going to close this. No. No. All right. All right. So I stopped sharing my screen. And I am going to also stop recording. So I'm just going to go ahead and conclude the recording by saying thank you everyone for joining. We have a